the OS that was too private for certain governments. Tails OS is one of the few operating systems built with a single purpose, erase everything. No logs, no history, no digital footsteps. Once your session ends, Tails forgets you existed, almost like an extremely secure goldfish. Journalists, whistleblowers, privacy advocates, and ordinary users rely on it because it pipes all network traffic through Tor and stores nothing on your device unless you specifically ask it to. But this level of privacy becomes a problem the moment a government prefers surveillance over security. Several countries move to restrict or ban the use of Tails because it makes user activity untraceable. It wasn't that the OS was dangerous, it was that its invisibility made monitoring impossible. For regimes that rely on control, an untraceable computer is basically a ghost with Wi-Fi. Some national agencies even issued internal briefs warning about Tails, not because criminals were using it more than anyone else, but because officials realized they couldn't gather intelligence from a system designed to wipe its memory clean every single time it powers off. The irony is that Tails only became dangerous to governments because it worked exactly as intended. The OS that looked too much like Windows, React OS. React OS is an open-source attempt to rebuild Windows from scratch. Not copy it, not clone it, but recreate its behavior using entirely original code. It's one of the most ambitious projects in OS history. Like trying to reverse-engineer a jet airplane by staring at it through a window. The goal was noble. Give the world a free Windows-compatible operating system that could run legacy apps and drivers without licensing fees. But because it mimicked Windows so closely, several institutions quietly banned or blacklisted it due to legal uncertainty. If Microsoft ever decided React OS crossed the line into infringement, anyone using it, especially government offices, could be caught in a lawsuit crossfire. Our early builds were incredibly unstable. Icons vanished, drivers crashed, menus froze. One user joked that React OS crashed before the desktop finished loading, which didn't inspire confidence for large-scale deployment. Certain countries and organizations simply prohibited its use outright, not because React OS was malicious, but because its legal ambiguity and technical fragility made it too risky for official adoption. The OS wasn't banned for wrongdoing, it was banned to avoid the possibility of future drama. The OS that embarrassed a government. Red Star OS 2.0 Red Star OS is North Korea's state-built operating system designed to enforce strict control and maintain ideological purity. It features a custom browser, custom text editor, custom everything, all heavily monitored. The OS even watermarks files internally so authorities can trace who shared what. But despite this obsessive control, Red Star 2.0 became the punchline of an international cybersecurity conference when researchers hacked it so thoroughly they replaced its startup sound with Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up. That hack spread globally, and soon the world was laughing at an embarrassed regime whose official OS got rickrolled. The government response was swift. The older Red Star version was banned internally, replaced by a lockdown rebuild with tighter kernel modifications and reduced attack surfaces. They upgraded mandatory encryption, patched vulnerabilities, and removed anything that previously allowed foreign researchers to toy with the system. Red Star 3.0 became significantly harder to modify, not because they feared criminals, but because they feared humiliation. In an environment where image matters, an OS that could be manipulated into meme territory became unacceptable. So, the earlier version was effectively erased from official use. The OS that triggered global restrictions, early Harmony OS. Harmony OS was caught in the crossfire of global politics long before it matured as a platform. When international trade restrictions struck Huawei, governments worldwide began re-evaluating whether their infrastructure should rely on software or hardware connected to foreign vendors. Early Harmony OS builds weren't banned for technical reasons, they were banned out of geopolitical caution. Some nations restricted its use in telecom networks, government systems, and critical infrastructure simply because they feared potential backdoors or dependency risks. It didn't help that Harmony OS was still evolving and in some cases shared components with Android, causing additional confusion about its internals. To policymakers, ambiguity is a security risk. Better to block it than to audit it endlessly. Ironically, these restrictions occurred before Harmony OS had a chance to demonstrate reliability or transparency. It was essentially banned for what it might become, not what it was. This made it one of the rare operating systems to be politically restricted on a global scale before reaching technological maturity. Harmony OS eventually improved dramatically, but the early bans highlight how operating systems aren't just technical tools, they're pieces of national strategy. Even a well-designed OS can't escape global tension. The malware loaded Android forks that got banned. Because Android is open source, anyone can modify it, rebrand it, and ship it. That's how we get dozens of custom Android forks, some legitimate, some experimental, and some that probably should have stayed in the developer's recycle bin. 
a number of extremely cheap smartphones sold globally were discovered to be running Android forks preloaded with spyware, hidden trackers, crypto miners, or unremovable adware buried deep in system partitions. These weren't small issues. Some phones secretly recorded usage data and transmitted it every 15 minutes to servers that investigators couldn't even identify. Others injected ads into apps that didn't have ads. A few even harvested contact lists silently. Once these findings emerged, governments and carriers began banning uncertified Android builds outright. Google followed by blocking play services from devices using unverified forks. In some countries, laws were drafted requiring all Android-based phones to run approved, auditable OS versions. The irony is that these forks weren't created by elite hackers. Many were simply rushed attempts by budget manufacturers trying to cut corners. But an OS that behaves like malware becomes indistinguishable from malware. So, they were banned, quarantined, and replaced with trusted alternatives. The pirated Windows builds that became public enemies. Pirated Windows builds have existed since the dawn of Windows itself, often branded as light editions or performance editions. Many promised more speed by stripping out system components. In practice, this meant someone removed random DLLs until the OS behaved like a caffeinated toddler. Things got worse when modified Windows builds started including hidden payloads, crypto miners, remote access trojans, keyloggers, or browser hijackers. Some of these builds found their way into schools, public offices, and even local government departments in certain regions. Systems slowed to a crawl, security breaches occurred, and IT teams discovered these machines weren't just pirated, they were compromised. As a result, several countries began officially banning the use of unlicensed or modified Windows builds in government institutions. Laws forced agencies to audit systems and migrate everything to verified, licensed versions. They weren't banning them for piracy, they were banning them because the security risk was catastrophic. One infamous build even played music automatically at startup, including a version that blasted the Shrek soundtrack. Amusing for users at home, catastrophic for a tax office. These builds weren't just unstable, they were liabilities and governments had no choice but to outlaw them in official environments. The corporate ban on Temple OS? Temple OS is one of the most unusual operating systems ever created. A handmade, biblical-themed OS built with 16 color graphics, a custom programming language, and a design philosophy based on divine inspiration. It doesn't support modern networking, modern hardware, or modern security standards, because it wasn't designed to. It was a personal vision turned into a functioning operating system. However, Curiosity led some employees in corporate environments to install Temple OS on work machines just to experiment. IT departments quickly discovered that Temple OS interacts poorly with modern office setups. Some corporate networks crashed when Temple OS attempted to interact with legacy network drivers. Even stranger, its print handling caused unpredictable output loops. One incident involved Temple OS triggering repeated print jobs that produced pages of Bible verses across every available printer, effectively giving the company an unplanned religious sermon. IT teams panicked, HR departments questioned their life choices, and executives demanded immediate bans. Corporate security policies were updated to blacklist Temple OS entirely. It wasn't banned for wrongdoing. It was banned because it simply couldn't exist safely in enterprise ecosystems built around security, compliance, and network stability. Temple OS remains a fascinating piece of computing history, but it's incompatible with the modern world, especially offices with printers, the OS that got legally erased, Lindos OS. Lindos OS was one of the boldest and shortest-lived attempts to merge the Linux and Windows worlds. Launched in the early 2000s, its pitch was simple. Run Windows apps on Linux without needing Windows. That was the dream. The reality? Microsoft immediately saw the name Lindos and said, absolutely not. Their legal team treated it like someone opened a store called McDonald's and promised better fries. Multiple lawsuits hit the project across several countries, and some courts even issued rulings that effectively banned the Lindos name from being used or sold. Retailers in certain regions were ordered to stop distributing it entirely. The funny part is that Lindos OS wasn't even that close to Windows. It used a compatibility layer that struggled to run half the apps it advertised. But the name alone caused enough confusion that judges considered it too similar. In the Netherlands, Sweden, Belgium, and even parts of the United States, the brand couldn't legally appear on shelves. The developers eventually changed the name to Linspire, but the damage was done. The OS that tried to bridge two worlds got banned for almost sounding like the bigger one. In the end, Lindos OS wasn't outlawed for technical reasons, it was banned because it poked the wrong giant, 